Welcome to the Momentum Ministry Partners podcast. This podcast is designed to provide momentum in our God-given roles of leadership as we partner together to equip today's Christian leaders for tomorrow's opportunities. Whether you're a pastor, youth leader, ministry volunteer, parent, or student, we want to be your go-to and most trusted resource for equipping and encouragement when it comes to your ministry and leadership influence. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you enjoy this episode. Hello and welcome back to another Momentum Ministry Partners podcast. My name is Eric. I'll be the host for this conversation. Let's be honest, I'm the host for all these conversations. So <laughs> we're so pumped that you're here today, that you're joining us for uh, an episode. We have Joel Fireball is with us. He's uh, kicking off Momentum Youth Conference. Oh, a Buddy, you're, it's Tuesday. We're at Youth Conference. It's the middle of the afternoon. We got students milling around in the background. Oh, you're speaking tonight. You can opening feel session. feel it in the air. And you brought good coffee. I did. Should we tell the story? We should tell the story. <laughs> so I'm a coffee snob. Yes. You know this about me. Yes. What did you bring me last year? Okay. I, I like coffee, but I like it for the warm taste, for the feeling, and for this wonderful, beautiful thing called caffeine. Okay. So I'm not a coffee snob. <laughs> and so I love Folgers coffee. And we were talking, and you said you hadn't had it. <laughs> How do you not? Have you never had Folgers? I've not w- willingly or knowingly. I don't know. Yeah, and so I, the crappy diner. I and legitimately that's think it, it tastes good. <laughs> no, it's a different vibe. It's a vi- it's a diner vibe. But I I bought him some to mm. make in his fancy things. I ground the beans. Yeah, there was a fresh. Bean. Folgers doesn't do beans. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, don't I think know. it was ground. <laughs> Dude, those have. beans were ground. That's like the leftover of everybody else's beans is what goes in a Folgers can. Uh, so. That's probably true. And what was your take? I and I put I made it at home yep. over my Chemex. I'd used to pour over, and I sent you a video, and I was like, "Buddy, this is this is like trash." <laughs> I thought he was gonna be like, "It's pretty good." And no, was I was like, like, "I'm just uh, gonna be honest. I can't. I yeah. couldn't even. I don't think I could drink the whole cup." I gave it to my admin. Because she likes Folgers. Yeah. So as, she dri- she and her husband a wonderful drank the rest human of it. being yeah. who loves the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I made up for it this year. End of the story. This is the Abbey Coffee Company. Best coffee in Marion, Indiana. Hands down. I would say even surrounding areas. Uh, this is pretty good, dude. If you made I up. come to Indiana Wesleyan, which is where we are right now, I get Abbey Coffee Company. There you go. Yeah. Use nope. code Joel Tent. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say no free ads, Abby. Yeah. If you're listening to this, uh, did that. This is a sponsored ad. I just like it. That's uh, awesome. It is good. It's way better than Folgers. Yes, I'll give you that. Yes. So thank you. Yes. Thank you, Cheers. Joel. Thank you. Well, I'm excited because uh, this year's theme at Momentum Youth Conference is invited, mm. uh, and you're kicking off the week, buddy. So we're we're gonna dive deep into like how Jesus personally invites each and every one of us to live life on mission with him. And so I'm so thrilled uh, at at what God's going to do. We've been praying for revival. It's our largest youth conference we've had in probably a decade. Um, So every youth pastor... That's wild. I'm not kidding. Every youth pastor I've talked to, they're like, this is our largest group that we've brought in years. And so God's moving. He's doing amazing things. Uh, Uh I know you're seeing the same things with like Crossroads Camps, with all your ministry. Like... We're, we're, God's moving. Student yeah. ministry is, is where it's at right now. And I'm, I'm like getting goosebumps thinking about this week. Mm-hmm. So what I would love to do with you, Joel, is you've been in student ministry for a while. I know you just got promoted, demoted. You're doing kids demoted. ministry now. No, no, no. I love kids ministry. I do. What is your title? Uh, next gen. Give, give, next us the, gen, give yeah. us the context of what what your role is, what does that look like at, at Crossroads? Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> woo! They're putting a very terrible picture uh, sticker of me. That was so funny. Yeah, in the background. Yeah, if you're listening, someone came up and Eric is famous. There's just people got Where, pictures I, of him on their water. It wasn't a terrible picture. It was a beautiful picture. But uh, uh, Okay, yeah, title. <laughs> um, I have always been a student ministry guy. I got very serious about my faith in student ministry, student pastors, and small group leaders in high school age, changed yep. my life. My dad was a youth pastor. I mean, I That's am right. like, I love student ministry. I hope to always have a hand in it until I die. And at some point, the church I'm at, I know maybe this is true at people listening to, maybe it's not. There was no collaboration between kids and students. 
Mm. And so they had said, hey, what if, you know, what if we took 0 through 18 under one curve, one arc, and you oversaw it? And normally it would have broke my heart to leave student ministry because I'm still mm. over student ministry as well. But yeah. I did just have a child. Well, I didn't have a child. My wife. Had, Your wife. Yes. Collectively. Oh, but I yeah. had to sleep on that small couch <laughs> so hard. Yes. So hard. And, um, yes. <laughs> and um, so I have a four-month-old now. Yeah. So it was weirdly exciting to think yes. about. Like, hey, all right, let's figure this out. As my four-month-old will go through this curve, that's pretty cool. So I am excited about it. So over kids and students mm. at Crossroads Church in Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, how many campuses give give our listeners like if you're not familiar with this, what's the scope of that? What does your role specifically look like at, at the campus you're at, and then over the variety sure, of sure. campuses around? So if I have to start by talking about Cincinnati, Ohio. Yep. I don't want to talk. I don't want to hype it too much because then everyone's going to come and know that this is the greatest place in the world. All right, but it's a great place. What people don't realize is that it borders uh, Kentucky. There's a yep. river, the Ohio River. Yep. And so, I mean, most of my friends live in Kentucky and they live 10 minutes away, 15 minutes away. Yeah. So because of that, we're one church in Cincinnati, but we are a multi-site church with campuses around. And so we're actually across Ohio and Kentucky, which is fun. Cool. So we've got eight campuses. Um, the spread isn't wild. It's from Lexington, Kentucky to Columbus, mm-hmm. Ohio. Sweet. And spread out with it. Yeah. So it's a blast. So all of them have student pastors of their own and kids pastors of their own. And I oversee that team. So for uh, analogy, I call myself a superintendent. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm a superintendent, and I call them principals there you who go. raise up small group leaders as the teachers. And my job is to make sure we collaborate and teach the gospel and have an arc going from kids to students. Love it. Yeah. Love it. All right. So in your context for any one of those campuses, what does like a weekly gathering look like? What are the, the rhythms and routines of your student ministry uh, just to give context for, for sure, those listening. Sure. Um, I'm a big fan of matching your church's culture. So uh, I was actually at another church for eight years before I was at Crossroads. Mm-hmm. And we did student ministry a little different because I just wanted to match the vision statement of the church. Um, I'm not saying it's the only way. It's just how I operate. Yeah. And so we don't have a different mission statement in student ministry. We have the same one. Um, and so uh, our church is a video venue, video teaching. So we the, at the Cincinnati location, Oakley campus, mm-hmm. for adults, there will be a live teacher, and that message gets streamed to the other locations. Yeah. So I matched that in student ministry mm-hmm. because our kids' ministry is already doing video content as well. And I don't know. I, again, is video as good as live? No. Um, but I was like, man, I don't want students graduating out from live teaching necessarily and going like, oh, now it's video? Like, yeah. I don't know. It's kind of cool to me that they will grow up in and through it. Yes. And so, yeah, so our, our broadcast location meets on a Thursday night, but everyone else meets on Sunday night. Gotcha. And that's for high school. And that is specifically to get that message mm. time to get turned around yep. and shot out. And then for middle school, we meet during our services. And the broadcast location yeah. has an 8.15 in the morning <laughs> service. And it's actually hilarious because there's like, you know, there's like 10 kids there, but you have to speak to the camera. Like there's, Woo! like we are, you know, because it's going gonna go to the other locations, which might have more than 10 in there, yes. you know. And so I, I feel so bad for those 10 that come to the A15 service because they're always like, they're just like zoning who out. are you talking to? <laughs> yeah, like, this guy's, cr- they probably think I'm crazy. Yeah. So anyway, that's how we operate. And then we are a big, uh, small groups. We call them C yes. groups. Yes. Uh, this is actually a fun fact. Yeah. Our name is Crossroads at our church. And so we call them C groups, but we've never written down purposely or said what the C stands for. So we purposely tell different people different things. No way. 100%. So sometimes we say community groups. Sometimes we say crossroads groups. Like so people make up stuff all the time. Church group. Church group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coffee group. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> and, and every time when someone asks what it means, we'll give different answers across the board. And there is actually no real, real word for what a C group is. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's hilarious. I love, like, you guys are so cutting edge as a church. You're creative. You're you're doing everything you can to reach people who are far from Christ. Mm. So get, give, like, what is that vision? Like, I might not be saying it correctly, but, like, what, for, a, for your church in yeah. that context in Cincinnati, which, by the way, if you're listening and you don't know where Cincinnati is or Ohio is, it's in the Midwest. It's flat. There's a lot of farmland. Not like, Cincinnati. I know. Come to Cincinnati. There's hills. I'm telling you. Well, but don't or don't come. 
I had to, I had to move to Ohio. It was my Africa. Like, have you Lord, been to Cincinnati? Lord, I have. Oh. We for my birthday, my wife and I came down to Cincinnati last year, and we spent a weekend just exploring the city, and it was glorious. See? It was awesome. You heard it here. We found a really good sushi place. What was, it was it? epic? Do you remember? I don't remember. <laughs> I, I'll look it up. I'll okay, text deal, you. deal. Um, but like, it, it just uh, I don't know. Ohio was my like. I, I never want to live in Ohio, so I'm just still a little bit bitter. It's, <laughs> it's fine. I I lived in Maryland for a long time and miss it. Oh, I miss the enough. East Coast culture. Fair enough. See, yeah. I grew up in Columbus. Yeah. Are you a Buckeye fan? No. All right, we'll move no. on. Yeah, we talked about it. Nah. I don't, yeah. We'll move on. Yeah. I know you're a Cubs guy. And yes. Yeah. yeah. But, all right. Well, um, <laughs> what were you getting at? <laughs> student ministry. What, what's the What's the, the vision? You said you, for student uh, ministry, you like, people, you were saying, you like yes, to have yes. like the vision as the same as the church. So, so what's the vision of the church? Helpful. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, throughout the Bible, we see people have different gift sets, and this makes up the body of Christ. At one point, Paul identifies apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, and teacher. And it's very clear. You don't have all of them. Right. Um, however, a healthy organization, that could be a team, that could be a church, that could be a student ministry or youth group, should have all of them. But a lot of times what churches look like, I'm just being honest, mm -hmm. are whatever their lead pastor has of those. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I grew up with <laughs> yes. a lead pastor that was a shepherd, and yes. holy cow, was he a good shepherd. Yes. So that church was a shepherding church, and they mm -hmm. were so good at it. Yeah. And I believe, for me at least, it is why um, I got deep biblical truths, because I was at a shepherding church. Now, I'm being honest, and I'm not picking on this church, but but when I would bring my friends, uh, they, the sermons and the message would start at an eight, like mm -hmm. at an eight level of Bible knowledge, Yes, uh, which I did since I'd been there since I was a kid. But yeah. for them, it was a little like, okay, what's going on? Mm. So our lead pastor at our church, I say all that to say, and I'll give you the bad side of ours too. Mm -hmm. um, he's an evangelist. Just he, not as yep. a job, he's a pastor as a job, but he, is, he, he does not go anywhere. Get his hair cut anywhere where he is not leading people to Jesus. I mean, yeah. the man, the man has a gift and he loves and lights up yes. seeing and, and has a gift for it. Seeing yeah. people who don't know Jesus come to know him. And so um, the dark side of that coin is, is that the, the saying? Yeah, <laughs> the, sure. Uh, yeah, of that coin. Yeah. Then is, the hey, other side? To, <laughs> the other side. Maybe we have to be intentional of, hey, what about the people inside yes. our church who have known Jesus and how do yes. we make sure they grow and towards sanctification and look yep. more and more like Jesus. And so that said, uh, our mission statement is to connect seekers. So that is a, is a buzzword in the church mm -hmm. word, but basically it means anyone seeking, which I'll at least clarify for us does not mean someone who isn't searching. If someone's like, well, not going to talk to you, like they're not yeah. going to talk to you. Yeah. But there are plenty of people who are into crystals or into signs mm -hmm. or, and they're just seeking for God mm -hmm. and they're probably looking in not the right place. Yeah. And so our church has tried really hard. Hey, for those people seeking, <laughs> what if we have an easy on ramp to get them the gospel of Jesus as Love an it. answer? So Love it. So that's what our student ministry is about as well. That's awesome. All right, Joel, that, that's super helpful. Um, I think like understanding the context gives clarity, which gives uh, direction for where I'd like to take the rest of the conversation. Great. So in student ministry, what is something that now, I, how long have you been at, on staff at Crossroads? A little over three years. Okay. So, yeah. so you haven't yet seen a whole group of high school students go no, through, no. which coming up on would yeah. be epic. Yeah, um, that's right. What is the thing that in the last three years you're just like blown away with? Mm -hmm. God's showing off in this area. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it's your C groups. Maybe people think they figured out what those, I don't know. Mm -hmm. what, what is it that you're like, this is so cool. It's the strength of Crossroads. It's the strength of our ministry. We're seeing this happen. What would that be for you? Um, me and you actually have got to talk about this on the phone a little bit a while ago, unrelated. Yeah. But um, I love what God's doing through our student leaders. Mm. Um, I have this new phrase I've adopted. I probably stole it from someone. In my head, I made it up, but I've stole it yes. probably. That's how but, it goes. But youth ministry means the youth do ministry. And I, I have double, tripled down on that with our team. And so mm -hmm. we are handing off very real, very heavy stuff that if students drop it, it would make a ripple effect. And at a young age saying, hey, I'm going to talk about this tonight, actually. I don't want to ruin most of it. But 11 out of 12 of Jesus' disciples were under 20 years old. Yes. Like, yes. Jesus has always used young people. Are they ready? Yes. 
No, no. Are they are they studied up yet? No. <laughs> are they willing? Unschooled, <laughs> yeah. ordinary men, I think. Yes. Yeah. yes. And they accepted an invitation. I, don't, uh, I can't get into so, today yet. I know. I can't get into it. But they accepted an invitation. And yes. not because of them, but because of God. Change the world. And so mm. somewhere along the way, student ministry came to like, no, no, we, this is our like, training ground. We're investing in them. And what if the best way they could actually be trained is to be giving opportunities that they'll drop and they'll sink yeah. in the water and they'll yeah so yes. i love our student leadership program and what's going on with that what does that look like when you say student leader <laughs> yes, yes, what yes. does that mean what's the on-ramp what's the process what is that what's required of them yes um we uh have to be a high schooler okay we i'm going to tell you guys the name and you shouldn't use it because it's a dumb <laughs> name okay or i uh, thought you were going to say it's trademarked and i'll sue you <laughs> oh <laughs> Everything we have, actually, this is real. If you're listening to this, everything we have, you can have. There you and go. I will take our logo off and send you the original PDF. And there you can you copy it and put it on yours. And I love that about yes, you guys. Yes, 100%. Yeah. So, no, you, you can steal the name. I just think it's dumb, but it's, like, too late to change it, you know? <laughs> anyway, our name is Influencers. Uh, okay. You know, when it came, we were like, you're influencing, the, you know, sure. but now Influencers means you have, like, a blue check mark by it. And that's mm. not what – these are the servants yes, of the student ministry. Yes, yes, so. Yes. But we're Leadership too, is influence. Just go with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're yeah. too far in. <laughs> so anyway, so ours are called influencers. So you can sign up to be an influencer. Anyone can apply. You do have to be a high schooler, but any high schooler can apply. Okay. Now, we will only take per location, we'll take between 12 to 15. Cool. So a lot of people, we will say, hey, you know, not, we'll use it as a discipleship opportunity. Mm -hmm. Usually they're younger, a ninth grader or a 10th grader, mm -hmm. and they want to do it. And, hey, here's some areas we could see you grow in mm -hmm. before you step into this next year you know sweet and so it doesn't have to do like are you great with a microphone or it really doesn't a lot yeah. of it a lot of our ruling is character mm. and um heart. yeah character heart and then also just um clarity's kindness so mm. it's a lot of time so it's 10 hours a week is what a student will give to do this for two years uh which is wild so it's sometimes awesome. students self you know say i cannot do this yeah and so we understand and they're yeah. awesome that doesn't mean they can't have influence in our student ministry and we have plenty of student leaders that are student that are volunteers mm -hmm. or small group leaders for middle school um, but this specific program kind of runs the ministry yeah yeah dude i love that when you set the bar high hmm. Uh, students want to m meet that mark. Hmm. They want to rise to the, like, I think that's maybe human nature. Like, we want to know what, what's yeah. expected of us. So the fact that you're, like, so crystal clear in saying that and that even some of those students would self-select and go, I can't commit to that. Yep. That's amazing. I think sometimes in our churches we, like, don't. We make the bar yes. so low because we want anybody to come in that then no nobody wants to do it because they're like, well, what's yes. actually expected? Yes, we should There's talk, something there. We should talk about this for a little bit. I know it probably wasn't yeah. in your script, but go for um, it. But volunteer commitment, yeah. Uh, no, seriously. For yes. years, I thought, oh, I'm the one getting paid, and I know I have plenty of youth pastors here who are 100% are volunteer as well. But still, I'm the one with the weight on my shoulders, yes. and so this is my responsibility. And so I would keep the bar low, and I would get low barred volunteers and leaders, honestly. And I went to this conference that we like accidentally went into mm. and the, the churches that were all there were all huge churches. I was like, how I, I, we were definitely the only church in the room that nobody had heard of everyone else. I was like, mm. oh my gosh. And all of them had a minimum four year commitment for their volunteers, minimum. Wow. And they all had hundreds of volunteers. And I was mm. like, wait, but that doesn't, the math ain't math. And yes, you know, and they were like, Joel, listen to me, you raise the bar, you will get better people and more people. And so I'm not saying you have to do a four year, but no, that's, yes. that's great. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Self-selecting, same thing. We have lead teams at every location that are full volunteers mm. and anyone can be on a lead team. Yeah. We say, hey, here's what's going to take. Here's the amount of time. Yes. And then people can say, I can't do that. Or they'll be like, I would love to give 10 hours of my week yeah. to like help run the student. Okay. Ministry. So, so for, for those volunteers and for your student leaders, what does that application process look like? Do you just verbally tell them that like, Hey, well, I need you to sign up for a year and like the, the 10 hours a week or like, is that written down? Do they have to like sign in blood? Yep. Like what's that? <laughs> yep. What's that process? It, it is written down. And I'm going to be honest. It took us, we are in year three of influencers. Yeah. Uh, year one, it wasn't like they signed something, but, mm -hmm. and here was what missed was the gap between what a student was signing up for and what their parent thought they were signing Ooh, up for. Okay. So we have now over clarified on paper and it's not even for the student. And so they can take home and their parent can look at it. 
I mean, they're giving they ten. Know. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I, I, this is a true story. I sat in a room with parents who were all of our student leaders' parents, and they grilled me <laughs> for just how much time their student was at the church, which is hilarious in general. But literally, I, I was like, I, it was one of the one of the harder conversations I've had with parents, and mm-hmm. I've had hard ones. But they're just drilling me, and I was just sitting there going, I don't think their kids told them <laughs> how much time this would be because i know i told their kids but yeah so yes yes it is all written down now sweet there's a whole leadership thing in fact it's it's yeah. now written down before they apply yeah. and takes parent signatures yeah. and all that so yeah so what does that look like for those students because i know you take them like you go do certain trainings events uh worship weekend yeah. like what what does that look like yes 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 so um the shortest version is here's a typical week is uh they're training ground with a safety net mm-hmm. since they are high school is middle school okay so for us that is upwards of three services sunday morning so they will get there in the morning and they will go on the team that they are in the rotation for right there the rotation could be c groups the rotation could be connections which is for some church called first impressions or guest mm-hmm. services it's mm-hmm. like uh the setup team and what yeah. the first experience yeah um production which is our for us it's band and worship and tech um or communication which is both digital communication and uh, from a stage. So Sweet. you'll go through, so you'll go then on to your rotation. So if you're connections, you'll go, you're on the setup team, you know, mm. and, and actually you're leading adults who are there to volunteer, which is yeah. really cool. If you're communications, you're doing the announcements that week. And guess what? We have some really bad announcements some week, some weeks. Um, and, and that's okay. And that's okay. Yes. Yeah. And then we give them feedback and we yes. grow and we see them grow by the time it sticks is right when they're getting good. It's when they're like, they so go to cool. the next rotation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, dang it. Um, but again, it's youth doing ministry. It's yes. youth ministry. And yes. so, yeah. And so that, that is where a lot of those, like five of those hours is right after that. We used to do it on a night of the week, but just mm. for youth pastor schedules now, right after that, then after all the services, they go to lunch. Okay. Um, Hmm. And so we do kind of pay them in food. Not that this is a necessity, but they have been there since 6 a.m. Sure. And it's now like whatever, 1 yeah. p.m. So maybe it's more than yeah. five hours. But there it's so we'll pay them with food. And that's when we debrief and we talk through their stuff and whatever. Then Love one it. of the days of the week, they come in and we try to make it during office hours if possible mm-hmm. because we have adult volunteers helping also. And that's where we do the biblical training. So it's two hours. We'll do a biblical training, and then they'll go in their rotation and, and plan for nice. the next week. So, yeah. Nice. So that's what that looks like. We do do an influencer's retreat at the end of the year, yeah. um, which is all, again, it's a two-year program. So uh, you'll get to go twice, but it's all influence student leaders from every location. And mm. it's where we are trying to do what we, I said earlier. It's, it's not for the seeker. Yes. It's where we are like pouring in and we start, you know, we start knowing that yep. training ground they've gone through for the yeah. year. Um, and mm-hmm. we are not to, so for our biblical training this last year, I mean, we pick a different thing. We used student alpha Yeah. and, and that's just, Fantastic. What, yeah, that's just what we, I mean, it's, it's really well done. So mm-hmm. we also didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Yep. Uh, there's really good student stuff out there to just yeah. find and train on. So yeah. Sweet. Joel, that's awesome. It's a blast. That, the like the student leadership stuff and and even the the podcast that we did previous to this one uh with charlie and andrew like gets me so excited because they're talking leadership development discipleship Mm. partnering with parents on 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 their level and their context that stuff makes my heart go pitter patter because i think so many times churches think like it's my job uh to do the work of the ministry I'm the paid professional. I'm the youth pastor. Yes. I'm, I'm the, the ministry hired gun. And so I'll just go do it all. And we forget that scripture tells us to equip the saints to do the work That's of the right. ministry. That's right. I, I like it so worked up about this stuff. And so I know you That's do right. like cohorts and, and other coaching with youth pastors and uh, like what does in, in that like realm, maybe this is one of those things, but what are some of the things that like in student culture, student ministry culture, you see in your circles where you're like, I just, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of seeing it. I get frustrated. I want to put my head through a wall. Like I have a list of things that for sure would be one of them. Like I'm tired of seeing students be the, uh, well, they're the church of the future. And I'm like, they're part of the church now they're here. So what, what would that be for you? All right, let me first respond to that because okay. it is also one of mine. And then I, I will I'll sure. t- turn a corner. Yeah. Um, but you said this, like it is biblical to hand off your role and not only just to equip the saints, but I mean, Jesus <laughs> took 12 with him. 
He lost one. Unqu- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you will too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if Jesus did, that's right. We uh, came home from the mission trip. We brought we, almost everybody. It was a good trip. Yeah, we try to we try to have our groups at ten. We don't always, yes. but we try. We literally say, if Jesus did twelve, we could we well, let's do ten. Yes. Like a little yes. bit less. Um, but yeah, Jesus, I mean, you can, you can go through it. Pa- Paul would straight up start churches and leave. Yes. Like, like, oh my God, he yes. would get trashed if, if he was in the modern church today. And then, um, and then the famous one is Jethro from Exodus 19, where Moses is a dang good leader. Yeah. Who's doing all this stuff. And his father-in-law's like, dude, you're in the way. <laughs> like literally dude, stop. You're in the yes. way. Hand stuff off. Yeah. Delegate. So that is a big one. Here's one that that I will take a turn or two because I think it's a fun one to talk mm-hmm. about. Um, when a student ministry has an identity crisis. Mm. Uh, so let's just talk a little bit. Um, mm. There, I think this is internal language, but internal language is like to know who you are. I think there's a difference in a youth group and a student ministry, and I think both are good. I think both are needed. Mm. I think you want to know who you are. Like what, what is your church asking you to do? Yeah. So if you're, be, my, I grew up in a youth group, which means my youth pastor was my main source of discipleship. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, th- th- I would call that a youth group because it's a, a group, right? Yep. Um, and I loved it. It made me who I am. And then I think the student ministry is where like your church is saying, hey, if you're going to have whatever it is, 60, 70 kids, you can't personally disciple 60, 70. Correct. N- maybe you're, someone out there is good enough. I can't, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, you might need to have more of this ministry model where you're raising up leaders to, to mm-hmm. have these youth, min- multiple youth groups within, yeah. right? Now, both are good you should know who you are <laughs> and you should know which one you're called to and you should double down on it. And you should not try to be what the churches on social media yep. are being. And then on top of that, mm. once you know who you are, you still shouldn't be called <laughs> to be what the churches on social media are being. That's okay. Like to, to network and have ideas that are shared and not rewrite, you know, everything or reinvent the wheel, but yes, know who you are, mm. know what you're called to be mm. and go after that. Hmm. And uh, I think when I talk hmm. to youth pastors and they're like, oh, man, how do we do this thing that you guys did? Um, or I've been on the other side of the seat too. I look at a student ministry and I look at Elevation Youth or whatever and I'll see something and I'll go, oh, we got to be doing. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> very different contexts, very different churches, very different cities, very different yep. states. You know, what are we called to do? What are you yeah. called to do? So, yeah. So if you're coaching a, a youth pastor, maybe there's somebody listening to this and they're, they're like, I need to figure that out. Hmm. What advice do you give them? How do you like pinpoint what is your identity for your church, your student ministry? I, I really do think you need to talk with your senior leadership. I really do. Because I think it's not what is your identity as a, stu- as a student ministry. I think it's what is your what is your mm. identity and calling as a church yeah. to that community. Yeah. And start there. Um, and then you can go backwards. Because let's say they're like, hey, it's to reach within 10 miles of our building. Great. So then you know, okay, our students, I want to get them involved in our serve stuff that's happening within 10 yes. miles of our building. You know, whatever it is, yeah. um, I, th- I think that is critical because, I mean, mm. we've all known youth pastors. We've all probably been the youth pastor who's running after something, and we think we're killing it. And then our senior leadership sits us down and goes, um, excuse me. Um, Hang on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought I asked you to do this. And you're like, I'm killing it. I'm doing all these things. And they're like, well, we didn't ask you to make a new mission statement uh, and buy a church van and paint it green and redo the youth room and like stuff that could be amazing. Hypothetically speaking. Hypothetically <laughs> speaking. It's funny because it hurts. <laughs> yeah. And I've been there too. I really yes. have. Uh, I was actually, while I was here at Indiana Wesleyan, I was a youth pastor at a church plant for mm. four years. Mm. Well, there was a, there was another youth pastor there, but I was like the, whatever, yeah. the unpaid intern yeah. at it. And man, we, we would go hard after whatever the youth, the senior pastor was not calling. We had our own mm. mission statement and our own mm. colors and they were two totally different things yep. and it was a blast, but I have no idea how that church is doing right now yeah. or that student ministry is doing because mm. it wasn't handed off. It yep. was, you know, yep. the senior pastor is still there. And anyway, yeah. alignment's big. I, I, I yes. know we use the, the business world a lot, but Apple, whatever, like, yeah, yeah. Imagine you're, Apple you're music pulling in line. the yeah. same direction. It's, it's called being a team. And, and not only, like, I think sometimes we forget in student ministry, like, you're also trying to reach their families. And sometimes the front door yeah, for a student is also the front door for their family. Yeah. Because mom and dad, like, how many churches do the mom and dad start coming because their kids were oh loved on and All invested the in? Time. Yeah. Exactly. All yeah. the time. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Joel, okay, I want, I want to, uh, I think we got time for one more question. I'm going to continue this turn and, and then a 45 trajectory. minute speed <laughs> round. I think the, uh, 
the identity thing that you you just said about like understanding your identity as a, a student ministry and within the context of the same direction, the vision, being mm-hmm. in alignment with your your senior pastor in the church, that's huge. We've actually done podcast episodes on the value of the partnership between the youth pastor and the senior pastor. Mm-hmm. Huge. Mm-hmm. You got to build that relationship. Mm-hmm. They're parallel in so many ways. For you, as you're now next gen and you're overseeing, I guess when you have a kid, then you get promoted to do children's yes. ministries. <laughs> yes, I, I didn't know that's all I took. <laughs> yeah, I what, would have done it did, earlier. What What are you seeing with like the younger generation with Gen Alpha? Yeah, like oh, that fun. that is so big in their identity, and <sighs> that there's this like weird shift that I'm kind of watching happen in student ministry culture, where it's gone from like. Uh, entering their world, we're going to play video games together, we're going to bond and connect over Fortnite or whatever, to now it seems like, and tell me if you see differently, uh, it's so big on like helping students understand their identity and who they are. And and mm. some of that speaking a different language, maybe. Mm. But like, what are, what are you guys doing to help reach Gen Alpha, yeah. equip them to understand who they are and their place in the church? I'll talk two elements on this. Um, one, here's just a, something I'm seeing in the wave of student ministry mm-hmm. right now. Um, there's always been waves in the eighties. It was a bus Yeah. in the nineties, <laughs> yes. in the nineties, it was a youth room, the coolest youth room, the early two thousands. It was the biggest party. Mm-hmm. What's the wave, right? I think the last wave actually was, was even the 2010s, twenties was small groups. Mm-hmm. Um, we kind of are still in that. Um, but making sure every student is known and seen and discipled by someone. Yeah. Good. All right. So what's happening? Here's a wave I'm seeing. And I guess my guess is you are too, if you're listening. Um, it actually looks more biblical, but mm. students are starting with an outside faith and then taking it inward. Hmm. Um, Explain that. So when I was in high school, I would come to Momentum Youth Conference. And remember, I was strongly discipled. I was already accepted my call to youth ministry mm-hmm. or to ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, I was had a coach. I was coming off of Operation Barnabas. And I remember thinking, like, how, how cool would it be if I could have the faith to raise my hand in worship? I'll get there one day. Sure. Like, like yeah. I, ha- I felt like, but I still, you know, I'm still dealing with some stuff and mm-hmm. I still like, like I had, <laughs> like yeah. it was like this next step. Uh, baptism was the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of my friends, a lot of people that would come meet Jesus would be like, I, I'm going to need a little bit before I would like get baptized. Mm-hmm. Now, this is why I said it's actually a little more biblical. Mm-hmm. In the Bible, you see the Ethiopian who's just like, like, hey, there's water. Get back, and then you figure it out. I am seeing the wave yes. with this generation. They're like, sure, I'm in. I'll get baptized. Worship. Hands are up. Yes. Life surrendered. And then they go and do dumb stuff. And, and I think as student pastors and small group leaders, we are confused. And we're like, hey, what the heck? You were just raising your hands in worship. Yes. You know, and now you're, and I think we have to realize, like, really it's this mm. outward in experience that we're seeing. And just mm. because they are outwardly expressing a strong faith doesn't mm. mean they are mature in their faith. And so I think to have a heart of compassion instead of like reprimanding, yeah. um, understanding that, hey, they've started outwardly, yes. and we would love to see this go inwardly. <laughs> this song, Inside Out, we need to re-flip it, you know? Yes. From the house. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, and so, yes, that's a, that's a wave I'm seeing okay. in the church, at least. This definitely has nothing to do with Gen Alpha and Gen mm. Z, but I'm definitely seeing it happen in young people. Mm. And adults are not that way still. I think they're still like, mm. then you go to the adult service, no one's raising their hand, and they're like, I'll get there. I bet I have some stuff yep. I'm dealing with. So yep. I'm hoping we lead up in it, but cool. um, yeah. That's super helpful. I like that. Gen Alpha, Gen Z. Yeah. I'll just talk quick. Um, Gen Alpha, for anyone listening, is through basically through middle school, mm-hmm. and Gen Z is up. So you still have to care about both. This is, however, one of the first times in history the church is early to the generation game. We, we were talking about millennials when I was working at a church. I'm a millennial. Yeah. Um, that's when they started talking about them. Yes. We're talking about Gen Alpha while they're kids. That's yeah. amazing. So lean, True. lean in. Um, but also understand we still are dealing with Gen Z as well. Obviously, this technological wave that we've seen, a lot of people are saying trends might even go to where they are going to go against their phone. A lot of this is Gen Alpha is the first ever um, generation to be raised by digital natives. Yes. Yeah. And so. Yes. They a lot of them are seeing their parents neglect them due to technology, and so they might go the other way. However, technology, technology or not, what we are definitely seeing with Gen Alpha mm-hmm. is uh, them seeing their peers lead. Mm-hmm. So when they watch an unboxing video, yes, and on on YouTube, it is someone their age. Now, who's behind the scenes? 
for sure. Older people who have helped equip and pay for the ads and get the camera and whatever, but they're yeah. seeing them happen. So I think this is where our role as student ministry comes in. Mm. Hey, we can go and we can be the behind the scenes. We can be the director. We can, through our church, help fund the pizza. Yeah. And, and we yes. can equip, but it can be them stepping out and doing it. So I think mm. if we catch this wave right, I think there's a lot of hope mm. for the church and specifically for, for student mm. ministries and youth groups around the country. Man, that's so cool. You know what we should do? What should we, we should do? call them influencers. No, we shouldn't. <laughs> It makes sense if there wasn't another word for influencers with the blue oh, check marks, because it would make sense. Yes, they, they have influence and they're leaders, but no, you'll call them, call them, someone will find a better name and, and email me. Email me oh, what you find. Man. Leaders. I, I don't, love it. Servants. I don't know. Interns. Action verb. <laughs> yeah, action verb. Student ministry. Uh, oh, that's so good. Joel, thank you for sharing all this. This is super awesome helpful. Blast. I'm sure we could sit and geek out in youth ministry worlds and, and keep this conversation going. But uh, I know you got to go prepare for tonight's message. Is that tonight? Uh, we're praying for you. We're praying. We're going to share the gospel and we're going to give students a, an invitation uh, to cross from death to life. Uh, largest youth conference we've had in a long time. Uh, so if you're listening to this, we'll put the link in the bio to Joel's message that's going to happen just here in a few hours. Uh, and we'd encourage you to go watch that in the future. Let's go. Or in hindsight, I don't know, yeah. in the past, because it'll happen in the past. Joel, thank you. You're thank welcome. You for Thanks for here. having me. It's awesome. Enjoy this As coffee. Always. It's super good. Next year, if I <laughs> if I bring you coffee, I'll go in the middle. You know, right, Folgers, right, right, right. I went all right. Right close, so I'll get like a middle ground one. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to our listeners for tuning in to another episode of the Momentum, Momentum Ministry Partners podcast. If you have questions, if there's a any way that we can be resourced to you, we're here for it. Let us know. Thanks. Thank you for joining us for this episode. We hope you found it to be valuable. And if you did, would you share it with someone else in your network who might enjoy it? Also, would you please go on and subscribe, rate, and review it? That way you don't miss any more and somebody else will be able to find it too. Also, because we want to be your trusted resource, if you have a question or topic that you would like us to discuss on an upcoming episode, send that to us via email to info at buildmomentum.org, or you can send us a DM on any of our social media platforms. You can find us there at Momentum Ministry Partners. Also, if you need more information on our ministry, be sure to check out our website at buildmomentum.org. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you next time.